Although named for the Sangre de Cristo Mountains in New Mexico, Painted Mountain Corn is selected here in Big Timber, Montana, surrounded by the Crazy Mountains. Hello Frank and Painted Mountain Corn fans. It's June 12th, it's really really late for planting, but I've been planting a few months and the reason it's so late because I have 12 different spots all around the state and I have to be there and my home nursery gets planted last. So you're here to see how I do it. Um, this is what I call the wet trench method. I just made that up. Um, this works especially good when you've got really really dry land and the corn needs moisture. And so if you see the row there, um, I hoed out a trench with a hoe and I took a hose and poured water on the bottom of it. You can also use a five gallon bucket. It doesn't take that much water. Uh, the benefits of this method are that the seed is going to get a good start right away because it's surrounded with water. I let the water sink into the soil at least 10 minutes, maybe a few hours before covering it so the moisture goes down instead of up. And then I cover it. And the advantage is that the corn kernels get wet and start quickly but the seeds of the weeds don't get wet. And so your corn has a chance to outgrow the weeds. Then I have nice fluffy soil here today. Just covered up with my rake. After I've covered up the seed, I level out the row with the back of my rake. Then I rake the clots off of the top so the little seeds don't get stuck behind a mud ball or a rock when they try to come up. This soil is so good I really don't have to do this. But this process is often necessary when you're working really heavy clotted mud clay after rain. Packing it down to the rake because if the soil is too loose um, it evaporates and the kernels get dry. Because I wet the bottom of the trench, I'm not going to walk on it because my feet would sink in it and it would just make a mud hole. These two taller lines of corns that you look at were planted April 15th. That's really, really early. Um, and it is now June 12th. Um, the reason I planted them early is to develop a cold hardy line. These plants here were originally planted very, very thick, about, um, about two inches apart, three wide in the row, and that's, you know, uh, many kernels per foot, 24 kernels a foot or something like that, really packed in there. And then what I do is, uh, as the season goes on, I pull up the ones that are weaker. And the ones that can do best in the cold are the ones that get to live. And I wish you'd come earlier, you would see how thick they were, but you must, uh, you have to thin them before they get too big or they'll compete. The ground here is loaded with these little tiny dead plants here that show you about the size they were when I started pulling them up. And today I'm doing my second thinning. And that's not going to be the final one. I'm still going to leave them too close so that I can remove some more later after I am able to check out their plant architecture and um, give further screening of them. So, um, when deciding which ones are going to live, plant vigor is number one, the size and health of the plant, and the bright green color. The darker the better. Um, if they're yellowish or have yellow spots or chlor chlorosis, they get killed. That's a sign that they're not doing good in cold or especially wet cold. Now, I don't, in, in judging size, I don't just go by height because something can be tall and skinny, and that's not the type I want. I, am, I want plants that are shorter and stouter and stand up better in the wind. And so when I'm looking for plant size, it's not height. It's just plant volume and thickness and vigor. 
Um, five days ago, something unusual happened. We had a wind, and it broke about a fifth of my plants over, just snapped them off. I've never seen seedlings break in the wind before, but the neighbor's tree fell down, so I think we had a microburst or something like that. Um, some of them in here are damaged from that wind. Okay, this plant here is big and healthy. I'm going to let it live. This is a nice one, but it was a little bit smaller. So it's going. This one has some sort of damage on it. Um, I think this is one that got injured from the wind. I think five days ago it, it broke there. And so uh, it doesn't have as much wind resistance, so it's good. Okay, here's a small, weak plant, not as, not as vigorous. It's not bad. It doesn't have the early season growth of the others, so they can go back to Mother Earth. Pulling up for two reasons. It has some kind of damage on the leaf there, which I'm guessing might be the wind. Also, it has a tiller on it, and another little one here starting. And I am trying to breed away from tillers. Um, native corn originally had lots of tillers, like sometimes five or more. And there's no way that I can completely remove tillers in my lifetime from native corn, but I have been reducing the number of tillers. And that is one reason that I plant so many at the start, is because it gives me more choice of plants and I can remove the ones the tillers and leave the ones that don't have tillers. They'll all eventually get tillers or most of them will but the ones that start growing tillers earlier end up having more so I plant more, get rid of them and they never have a chance to grow and I make more progress in plant architecture. This plant was rejected because the leaves did not unfold. Frank calls this buggy whip. See how tight they are in there? Sometimes they'll pull out of it and sometimes they won't. It's really a problem. I'm not sure why it happens, but they usually, they're usually very long or, or wide leaf plants. I don't know. Let's see what a mess that is. I believe there's an inheritance factor in that, so I never let those ones live. See those little bug holes there? They always come in little pairs, and uh, often they're on both le two leaves, but this only has one. That is a sign of a certain insect. I think it's called a wire worm. I'm not sure. But on almost every case, the bug is now living deep in the crown of the plant. And when the plant gets to be tall, it'll start rotting from the inside, and the bug destroying it. So I don't think that plant has a chance of living, so it's gone. One more reason to overplant. We have a gap here. Um, I pulled out a corn I didn't like, and there's too much space. It's inefficient to have empty space, and that bothers some people. But this is genetics. I don't want to have a plant that has got bad traits in there spreading its pollen just because I want to fill the space. Sometimes you have to be tough. There's big empty spaces, but you'll be happy next year you didn't let something multiply and spread its pollen if it has a problem.